Hi guys, happy Friday. We're gonna jump into our fourth day of tech structures and it is our second to last that we'll be introducing them. We'll still be working with these a lot guys um, for a while, but this is our fourth tech structure that we'll go over today. Before we get started, I want you to have your tech structure guided notes open. If you have not made, um, made a copy of those, I'm not real happy with you, uh, but it's okay, I still love you. But you definitely need to make a copy of these guided notes and I'm gonna show you how. So you'll go into your ELA period, you'll scroll down to week five and open up that Monday folder and you'll click this right here, the text structure notes. Then you'll click that link and it'll make your, you a copy. Um, hopefully all of you, if not most of you, have already done that, okay? So what you'll do is you'll go to google.com, you'll click your apps here and you'll go to drive. They should be right up here. So like mine are right here. So I can just click them. You might have to go to recent. You might have to te uh, type text structure or a copy of text structure notes up here in the search drive, but they should be there, okay? So definitely have those open as we go over. Definitely have those open as we go over the, um, the text structures, okay? I will uh, pause for a minute after we go over this fourth text structure and let you copy those notes down, okay? So text structures, let's just remember, okay? Let's review first. What are text structures? They um, are just the different, the five different ways that we are going to organize nonfiction writing. So we've already hit three. We've hit description. We've hit compare and contrast and order and sequence. Today, we're going to talk about problem and solution, okay? Which... Uh, is really all in the name, but we'll get to it. Just remember that text structures are the way that our nonfiction, so our real life, real text, um, everything that happens in them is real, so it's informational, um, are organized, okay? That's what text structures are. We talked about description. Um, remember, this is when an author is going to give us details about something. They're really gonna paint a picture for us. Um, they're gonna give us a lot of adjectives, characteristics, examples. Every single text structure is gonna have that graphic organizer. For description, we're gonna have web, Next, we have compare and contrast. You guys have done this for years, okay? This is just when an author is going to describe the similarities and differences between things, okay? We're really looking for the likenesses and the differences. The graphic organizer for compare and contrast is Venn diagram. And then yesterday, we started working with order and sequence, which is really like our timeline of text structure. It's when things happen in chronological order, okay? We're gonna look for a, um, or it could be a list um, of steps in a procedure. So any kind of recipe or how-to is going to be order and sequence. We're gonna be looking for events in order of occurrence or instructions given step-by-step. Step. Um, the key words are really, really, really important in order and sequence. We're gonna see a lot of first, next, then, finally, things like that. Our graphic organizer here is gonna be a timeline, one thing happened, next thing, next thing, next thing, in order. Today we are going to add to that, we're gonna order, or we're gonna add problem and solution. I am now gonna go to our notes, so you can um, pause me if you need to, or open a new tab and go to your guided notes. If you need the description ones from Monday, just pause here and fill these in so you'll fill in those boxes. Don't forget, you just click on the box and you should be able to type, or you'll have to add a text box right here. Okay, so pause here if you need description. Remember, example should be blank. Pause here if you need compare and contrast. Pause here if you need order and sequence from yesterday. And then go ahead and pause here if you need the problem and solution one. There, it's pretty, um, it's pretty simple, okay? Problem, solution, problem solved problem solution resolved by. Okay, so pause here, fill those out. You will be turning these in, so it's super important to keep up on that, okay? All right, I'm going to jump back to our lesson, but pause here to fill that out, and then um, you may hit play when you are done. All right, so we are gonna cover a new text structure today. Just like I said, it's problem and solution. I know this is gonna shock you, prepare. Okay, the author gives you information about a problem, and explains one or more maybe solutions. I know, crazy, problem, solution. You get a problem and at least one solution. Some things that we're gonna look for is a problem that is needs to be solved, okay? Or it is solved. Some keywords we're gonna look for, problem, solution, solved, resolved by. Our graphic organizer is just going to be a problem. So you might wanna look for like a question like, hmm, what do I do? And then the solution, that's just what we use, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and read this to you guys. And I want you to think about what the problem is and what the solution is. Okay. And we can put them in our own words. 
Do you take your dog for a walk or does your dog take you for a walk? Leash pulling is a common problem with puppies, especially large breeds, like Bo, right? Leashing pull, leash pulling can easily lead to your dog getting free of his leash or into trouble. To leash train your dog, you must stop, stand still, every time he pulls on the leash. When the dog calms down, praise him, wait a minute, and then begin to walk slowly. The minute he starts pulling again, stop, wait, praise, move on. With your practice, your dog will soon learn not to pull on his leash. So think about it. What's the problem that we're trying to solve here? Okay. It's leash pulling, right? You know, it always takes me a minute to do this. Do, 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 do. All right, we got leash pulling. What's our solution? Okay, I really love how it puts it in this. It kind of puts it in chronological order down here, which is crazy. Okay, but we're gonna stop. We're going to wait for them to stop pulling. We're going to praise the dog. And then I'm going to put repeat. Okay, so it gives you a solution to your problem. It tells you how to solve it. That's problem and solution, guys. All right, hold on one second. All right, let's go ahead and do it with this one. We're looking for our problem and solution. When flu season begins in the fall, staying healthy can become a challenge. Missing out on work and play is never on anyone's to-do list. So avoid the flu by following a few simple steps. Some people get the flu vaccine to prevent illness. Steer clear of, of the bug by washing your hands with warm water and soap several times a day. The less you touch your nose, mouth, eyes, and less likely you are to come, you, the less likely you are to come down with the flu. So we know that our problem here is the flu, right? So what are some things that we can do to stay away from it? We can get the vaccine. Man, this is all too real for us in 2020, 2021, right? vaccine. We can wash our hands. Okay. You can also stay away uh, from touching your face. All right. Remember, we're going to get that from our text. Don't just get it from your brain. Okay. Hold on one second. All right, it's time to play. What text structure is this text? We've been building off this. So you have four choices. It's either going to be description, it's going to be compare and contrast. It's going to be order and sequence, or it's going to be problem and solution. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay. When a wildfire breaks out, there are several steps to stop it before it can spread further called wildfire suppression. First, teams attack the fire by applying the fire retardant on flames and around unburned areas. This prevents the treated land from catching fire when the fire travels that direction. Then, firefighters on the ground fight fire with water by removing as much fuel as they can, like leaves, furniture, or anything else that may catch fire, and by digging trenches that flames can't jump. When the flames go out, firefighters mop up the land by cooling areas that are still smoldering. All right. So I think this one could probably be more than one. Okay. You could probably convince me of two. Okay. So I want you to think, what are the what's the best answer though? When I see words like first, then, okay, things like that, I think order and sequence. But I could also probably talk about problem and solution. The fire is a problem. This is what we do to... Um, to avoid it, right? So our answer could be order and sequence. It could also be problem and solution. All right, let's get to the next one. All right, we're thinking description, compare and contrast, order and sequence, or problem and solution. The Titanic was built in Belfast, Ireland, over the course of three years. It cost $7.5 million and took 3,000 men to build the 882-foot ship. Watertight compartments made it unsinkable in the event of a collision, and the four funnels were made to make the ship look more grand than most ships of the time. All right, is that description? So it really describes one thing. Are we comparing and contrasting more than one thing? Are we getting order in sequence? So we're saying first, then next, you know, first this happened, then this, or is there a problem being described and a solution? It's definitely description, right? It's describing the Titanic. All right. Panda bears and grizzly bears are both very large mammals. Pandas eat mostly bamboo leaves and stems. In contrast, grizzly bears love to eat meat. Another difference between panda bears and grizzly bears is that while grizzly bears hibernate during the winter, pandas do not. 
Unfortunately, panda and grizzly bears are endangered because they are losing their habitat. Okay. Am I describing one thing? Am I comparing and contrasting more than one thing? So looking at similarities and differences, is it an order in sequence? So it goes in order or is it describing a problem and a solution? Definitely compare and contrast, right? We're looking at the grizzly bears and the panda bears. All right, most ski and snowboard resorts open in mid-November. Sometimes, though, there is no snow for skiers and snowboarders to ride. When that happens, the results fire up their snow machines called snow guns or cannons. If temperatures are cold enough, air and water can be combined to create artificial snow, and the no snow problem will disappear under a pile of fresh white powder. Some ski resorts use the snow machines nightly until, the, until Mother Nature creates enough of her own snow. Am I describing something? Am I comparing and contrasting two or more things? Is it order and sequence or is it problem and solution? Stop and think about it, okay? It's definitely problem and solution. I've got a problem. There's no snow. It might be too warm. So what happens? They use their snow machines, okay? All right, last one. The Magic Kingdom is the, was, is the first built of four theme parks at Walt Disney World. It opened on October 1971, in, sorry, in October 1971, and the park features rides and shows related to major Disney characters and fairy tales. Symbols of the Magic Kingdom include Cinderella's Castle, Main Street USA, and rides like the famous Space Mountain Coaster. So I want you to think, is it describing something? Is it comparing and contrasting two things? Do we have order and sequence or problem and solution? Yes, I have a date here. So I think order and sequence, right? No, because there's not multiple dates. So think about it. Which one could it be? It's description, okay? All right, let's go ahead and jump into our show it on Buzz. Look how cute that puppy is. All right. Let me just go back to my show it. In that Friday folder. Woohoo, we made it to Friday. All right, I got my problem and solution, show it here. When an author is writing a step-by-step -step procedure or instructions, which graphic organizer should they use? So we're not talking problem and solution here, step-by-step. -step. We're gonna use this chronological order one or order in sequence. When an author is writing the, about answers to a specific problem, which graphic organizer should they use? That's our problem and solution, right? What type of text structure is this paragraph? I'm going to have you guys complete that because guess what? I totally forgot to put the answers here. Okay, I will fix that. But I want you guys to do the rest of this. There's only three more questions. You guys have got it. If you email me and say, Mrs. Nugent, where's your answers, girl? I will totally give you a couple extra bonus points for um, a wheel spin the next time I see you or if you're a virtual kiddo the next time you come to Zoom. If you have any questions, please let me know.